What is going on, guys? Welcome to the Wednesday night live stream. Uh, today we are talking all about turf scrubbers, and I have one of the masters himself, Josh from Clearwater Scrubbers, on today to share his wisdom with us. Thanks for coming on, Josh. How's it going, guys? Pretty good, pretty good. How's your day going? Good, good, good. We're building them like crazy for Black Friday. So oh, 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 that's coming quick. Yep. So, so what do we got? We got Reefer G's, Geraticate, Gary's on. A few of you guys starting to pop up in the chat. Tank Facts, Gal Gal, what's going on, guys? Happy Wednesday. Um, so I'm fairly new to scrubbers myself. I mean, I've tried Chato reactors and regular refugiums and different things. Um, yeah, you, okay, there we go. Inventory King, looking forward, I'm debating what to get. Okay, so first question. Someone that's never used a turf scrubber before, what is the main advantage, or why would someone want to swap to one over a regular refugium? The, the main advantage is, is that they are five to six times more efficient at removing nutrients um, than any other macroalgae you're going to find. Kato, mm -hmm. Calerpa, Red, Fern, whatever you want to use. Um, they're far more efficient at that. Um, two, you get the benefits of a CO2 scrubber in it with the oxygen exchange mm -hmm. falling down the screen. Um, three, it's a much, much smaller footprint than anything that you mm -hmm. will need. Basically, um, we're going to be releasing a line of sumps, but basically your sump isn't going to need to be near as large anymore other than for evapor water evaporation on that. Yep. Um, four, um, it improves your, your water quality all the way around because it takes the place of so many other things, carbon, GFO, um, bio balls or bio pellets, I should say, any of that mechanical filtration on that. And it also will increase the health of your fish. Okay. Awesome. So lots of really good benefits. All right. And we're back. Sorry, guys, the streamer program crashed on me. I had to quickly reload it. Um, okay, so we were just saying with using turf scrubbers, you're saying it does remove some of the CO2 out of the water. Yes, the green hair algae or sea lettuce or whatever algae will grow on the screen consumes the CO2 from the water to grow, but also releases oxygen. Mm -hmm. But you also get some oxygen put into the water through the waterfall effect yeah. down the screen mm -hmm. and also from the drain. So if I was running, say, like a calcium reactor, would that help counteract some of the lower CO2 from the fluent? It should. Yep. It should. Excellent. Now, when you're harvesting it, one of the questions in the chat, can you use it for something else? Can you use it to feed your fish or any other beneficial stuff from the algae oh, that yes. you're growing? Yes. There's, um, we have a customer who actually, he bought an extra spray bar, and he just hangs it in his tank with a rock to kind of help hold it straight. His fish pick it clean in a day. So um, then he just makes sure it kind of stays wet mm -hmm. for the next screen to be ready. Swaps them out. Oh, um, nice. You don't have to buy an extra screen. Mm -hmm. You can um, scrape it, harvest it, yep. feed it wet like that, or mm -hmm. you could even dry it out. If you dry it out, it's going to stink because there's a lot of living bacteria, pods in there, everything else. So as you're drying it out, all that stuff's going to die. It's going to create a pretty good stink. Yep. No, that's fair. No, that's awesome. Hey, free fish food's a nice, nice little bonus from it. Mm -hmm. um, so another thing with, I know with your brand, Clear Water Scrubbers, you guys, you recently changed the lights because I remember you mentioning this when we were talking at Macna. Uh -huh. So what's the certain thing? Like this was done for better growth. Is it more of a plant lighting that you swap to? Fill me in. We, par we partnered with SB Reef Lights mm -hmm. on it. My, Mike over at SB Reef Lights, he redesigned our, our light spectrum on it. Um, what it did was we changed to two spectrums of red. So we have 640 nanometers and 660 nanometers of red. And then we have two spectrums of blue on there now, a 420 and 450. Um, basically, what that does is it covers the prime growing areas of both chlorophyll A and B. Um, versus our old lights only had one spectrum of each. So it only had like 450 blue and 660 red, I believe. Um, but the quality of the lights, the quality of the drivers, the quality of the LEDs, far, far better than what we were using originally. So that is why we switched lights. Okay, awesome. Uh, his volume is low. Give me two secs here. They're saying your audio is a bit low. That's probably on my end, so give me two secs. Desktop audio. There we go. 
Say something for a sec. Good. Test. All right. Perfect. I think we're good to go now. Okay. Um, okay. So the new ones is more plant light is actually targeted towards actual plant growth. And I believe you said it was more for actual flowering plant, which terra algae is. It's classified technically as yep. a flowering plant, even though it doesn't flower. Okay. So yeah. For the chlorophyll A and B on there. Okay, perfect. Who is the bald guy? This is Josh from Clearwater Scrubbers, if you missed the intro. <laughs> perfect. Um, now, another question. I hear some people rate turf scrubbers based on tank size. Some rate them based on how much you feed. How, how do you go about sizing one to a tank? We rate them more towards the water volume. Mm -hmm. Unless you're just a heavy, heavy feeder, then we'll upsize it a little bit. Um, the reason we do that is, is, as most people know in the hobby, that dilution is the solution. Mm -hmm. So um, what one cube is in a 60-gallon isn't the same cube in a 220-gallon mm -hmm. because of the dilution on it. So that's where we, we go more towards that. Um, also, I personally believe um, that as far as the cube feeding mm – -hmm. Everybody's cube size is a little different for one. And two, food into the fish does not equal food out of the fish. Yeah. So it's not a one-to-one -one ratio on that. So that's where the error is. We'd rather size them off of your tag size. Okay, makes sense. Uh, so another question from the chat. What are the drawbacks, cons, limitations with an LG turf scrubber versus other methods? The drawbacks? Um... The biggest one that we get is is the height requirements under the sump for mm -hmm. them, depending on, you know, if you've got a large tank, it's hard to fit a large scrubber under there because ours are a little taller. Yeah. Um, other than that, there's really not a lot of drawbacks with them. I mean, not only because I build them, but mm -hmm. I wouldn't set a tank up without them because they just don't stop filtering ever, you know, unless you overclean the screen but if you forget to clean it, the algae is going to fall off and it's still going to um, keep filtering the water. Mm -hmm. The other methods, you know, um, most of the things I hear about Chato reactors and that I've seen is, is they grow great for one, two, three months mm -hmm. and then they stop growing or they start growing hair algae into them. And basically you've just got a turf scrubber and a cylinder. Yeah. Um, versus a standard refugium is is the space. Mm -hmm. it, you know, you you can shrink that down into you know uh, anywhere from a six to thirteen inch box is what ours are. So yeah. you're you're shrinking the amount of space you need down. That that is one huge advantage that I so far what I see with them because normally for you know a turf scrubber that big could be a giant refugium that you'd have to get the same amount of filtration. I yes. uh, just want to throw this one out for it scrolls past. Steve Simon here. My scrubber is doing amazing. Thanks for all your help. This guy's helped me any time of the day and is the best customer of support. Thank you, Josh. There you go, Thank man. You. Thank you. We appreciate it. Got a nice big shed out there. That was awesome. <laughs> um, so a question. So one drawback someone was saying about iron dosing. I know some of like that Pax Bellum, some of those, they want you to dose an iron supplement so you don't hit that wall of Chato growth. Um, is that thing relevant for turf scrubbers? Do they need any supplementation over time? Um, I don't know, and I can't answer that. I would say yes, but on my personal system, um, granted, mine's only fish only right now, just because I don't have the time to keep up with corals. Um, but I haven't done a water change on it in eighteen months. Um, you would think by then it would depleted all of the iron out of there, and mine still grows like mad. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I have had some people, you know, where their growth has slowed down and they dose some iron back in, um, and it, and it took back off again to where it was. So okay. yes, the algae does use some iron to it. Mm -hmm. Do you need to dose it? If you're using a Triton or Red Sea or Aquaforce or something like that, it's already in there. So okay. you don't need to do a, another iron supplement. So it's likely in some form of trace elements. So if you're doing water changes, it's in those nutrients anyways. Yeah. So, okay. Um, so a couple of people were saying the whole thing about pods, and there's also about five other comments that say they have lots of pods growing on their screen. So that doesn't really seem to be a huge thing. That no, it, it's taken a little time for that um, internet myth to disappear. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Yeah, no, that's fair. Um, so you just said, okay, you would never do another tank without one. Is someone setting up a brand new tank? Is a turf uh -huh. scarber something you'd want to put on right away, or is it better to wait till the tank's more established, there's more nutrients, wait till the cycle's done maybe? What do you recommend? You want to that? wait for the tank to cycle before starting your turf scrubber. Um, the algae will remove um, ammonia from it, so mm -hmm. it will prevent your tank from cycling. You can have the water falling down the screen, but don't turn the lights on on it. Okay. No, that makes sense. It, but no, it won't. Um, it won't allow your tank to properly cycle. Okay. Nope. Good to know. So definitely hold off anyone new with it. Um, now, when you are actually running one, do you want to run the light twenty four seven, or do you want it on a schedule? What I recommend for everybody is when they're starting their scrubber is is run it twenty four seven until their first harvest. You will be able to tell once the algae um, takes hold on that screen how much of a nutrient removal it's doing from your system. Okay. Um, if it is overstripping your water, you know, if you're running a full reef system and it's overstripping your water, then cut it back in hours or four hour increments, but don't run it less than 12 and 12. Mm -hmm. Um, if you're running a fish only system, fish don't care if the water is too clean. So run it the whole time. Okay. So good to know. So basically only turn it down if you're stripping it too much. Yep. Okay. Or just feed more and fish will be happy. Yeah. Or dump a bunch of food in. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. No, nope, it's a good one. Uh, what else did I have for common questions on this? Um, so light hours, I mean, really you, so you can run it 12 hour. You can run it anywhere from 12 to 24 hours, right? You said not less than 12. Correct. Okay. Correct. Depending on your nutrient levels and your feeding and everything else. Okay. Perfect. Um, another claim I hear a lot is some people say you don't need to run a skimmer anymore with a turf scrubber. Have you tried running with or without one or any input on that one? Um, I have customers that do it on a full reef system. I don't recommend it on a, you know, a fish only or a fowler system. Um, there's nothing in a fowler system to remove those dissolved solids. Mm -hmm. um, I was just at Bulk Reef Supply last week. Zach there, who's the uh, new, uh, he brings in all the new items. He's mm -hmm. been running his tank for three years with no skimmer. No, no. Just an air scrubber on it. Um his corals had their feeders out during the day, mm -hmm. which most people normally you won't see that. Um, I we're going to be testing that. Um, we've got um, Charlie Gregory and Dr. Ken Simmons testing one of our units to find out the what is actually in the sludge of your skimmer. So all the good stuff that the skimmer's pulling out yep. versus the health of the tank just run on a scrubber only. Mm -hmm. That would so, be interesting. To answer your question, on a reef system, yes, you can remove it because the corals will use everything that's free-floating in the water as food. Yep. On a fish-only or fowler system, no. Keep your skimmer on there. Okay. No, that's a good way to look at it. Perfect. Yep. Now, so algae will take – so a skimmer breaks down your organics in the water – and now once that breakdowns further, that's essentially what the LG feeds off of, right? Is that Yeah, the skimmer removes your dissolved solids out of the water, mm -hmm. uh, whereas the scrubber is not going to remove them till they're part of the nitrogen cycle. Mm -hmm. But as soon as they're broke down, it's going to start using them to, to, to grow the algae. Mm -hmm. So, And it's far, far, far more efficient um, than a skimmer would be on that. Okay, no, that's awesome. Brilliant, Josh. There you go. Some good comments there. <laughs> um, some Marine Depot's in here too. They're loving it. So Marine Depot, I believe, sells your scrubbers now. Yes, they do. Oh. Yes, they do. Awesome. Good to see. So if someone is new, they just picked up a scrubber, is there anything they have to do to break it in or anything special with it? Or they just throw in the tank, plug it in, yeah, and they're good to just, go? Just get it set up above the water line, mm -hmm. above your full line of your sump, and hook the water up to it, turn the lights on, Mm -hmm. um get the flow dialed in and let it be okay. don't mess with it. now is there a certain thing of flow with it just cover the screen or is there a certain recommendation per scrubber what what i recommend to everybody to get optimal flow um the gallons per hour we put on there but what i recommend to everybody is is turn it up to where it's shooting off the side of the screen mm -hmm. towards your emergency drain Okay, that means once it's shooting sideways off the screen, you have too much flow. <laughs> Dial it back to where it's just not shooting off the edge of that okay. screen anymore. So um, is don't my... be alarmed mm -hmm. that the whole screen will not be covered with water. Um, water finds the path of least resistance. Yep. As 
the algae starts to take hold, it will fill back in on those unused um, portions of the screen. Okay, excellent. Um, so Reefer Jeeves is asking, do you make a hang on the glass type? No, we don't. Okay. Um, ours are all waterfall. Um, we are going to, I, I'm not a big fan of the hang on the glass ones, any of those submerged air bubble ones. Because mm -hmm. they don't grow hair algae. Most of the time, they grow slime. That is everything I've seen. Okay. Um, plus, there's the chance of something rusting because you usually have to have magnets or something to attach it to. Okay. Um, we are in the process of the R&D on making um, waterfall designs for the all-in-one tanks. Okay. That's so, neat. hoping... We got to get the sumps first, but I'm hoping by the end of second quarter next year to have that in full effect. Okay, perfect. So that actually kind of leads off when the question just popped up is, is there any plans for any new different styles? So all yeah, in one the, uh, add ons? We're, we're going to try to get the all in one. So the big okay. thing on that is, is being able to block the water off and getting the correct flow rate down mm -hmm. the screen. Now, would this be like in a Red Sea or Innovative Marine? They'd fit in a chamber back there? How would that? Yeah, ba basically, I haven't seen the IMs. I talked to JBJ at MACNA. Mm -hmm. um, basically, it would be the water's going to fall down into your return chamber, and we'll block yep. we'll block it off so that it has to go down that slot. Okay, nice. There'll be a screen side and a bypass side for them, and uh, uh, some sort of grill like that will attach to the back glass. Mm -hmm. Whether that's theirs or something we design, we haven't okay. worked that out. No, oh, very cool. That's nice to have those options for smaller tanks as well. Yep. Um, kind of already answered this one, but the question was, what's your point of view on scaling the tank size opposed to food input? Go by gallons with yep. us. Don't don't go by food and in, food input. Like I said, it's not one to one. Yeah. It, what what you put into your fish, they don't poop exactly back out. So. Mm -hmm. And I mean, another part too is to a bit, if you have a lightly stocked versus a packed tank, you know, you need a little more um for that. So it, it, there's no silver bullet I find with any of these things from 100% tank size or food input. Because every tank is going to be different to an extent, right? Well, that and, you know, mm -hmm. like I said, the, the bigger the tank, usually the more it gets diluted. So mm -hmm. like I said, one cube in a 60 gallon versus one cube in a 220, yep. parts per million isn't the same. Yeah, huge difference. Yep. Um, so there was another question a couple of minutes ago that scrolled by asking about how they affect water clarity. Um, it polishes the water similar to carbon. Okay. Um, but, you know, if you leave your skimmer like we, like we discussed mm -hmm. versus skimmer versus no skimmer, if you have a reef system and you remove your skimmer, your clarity is going to be more to ocean water where you're still going to see those free floating particles in there. And that's just food for your corals is what it is. Um, you're never going to get that crystal, crystal clear, um, you know, show quality stuff unless you use something like carbon or something like that. Okay. Um, but you're also stripping the water of everything. The good stuff um, as well. On a fish only, you shouldn't need to use carbon if you're using a skimmer and, um, a scrubber. Okay. Um, so another question is, why does the scrubber drain out the side and not the bottom? Why do you want water held inside the scrubber? The reason we did that is on the design was for everybody's different setup. So that, you know, if people couldn't mount them over their sumps, that there was another way for them to um, set them up. I've got customers that have them set on a table next to their tanks. They've got them set um, on a shelf outside their sump, mm -hmm. whatever. It just made it easier for us um, from a manufacturing side point okay. uh, to to do it out the side. Mm -hmm. Nope, that makes more sense. Now, actually, another question. If, if the power was off, for instance, would it still hold water inside of it? It'll drain to just below where the bulkhead is okay. so it'll hold a little bit in there but not near as much as when it's running okay so if there was a power outage potentially would like would your algae dry out or that bit of water kind of keep it moist enough no your algae is going to dry out because yeah. that's above you know it doesn't fill the entire chamber mm -hmm. so you know you've got probably 20 minutes and the algae will be 
dry. Okay. So, so having well, like the power, pump- it shouldn't be that bad because the lights aren't going to be cooking it. If you lost your pump or something, and the algae is on the lights, the lights will help dry it out a little quicker. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Everything would dry off. Yeah. Okay. So in a long term power outage, if you didn't want to restart it, it would be good to have it on a battery backup or something. You can. Um, I've had people that have had screens dry out and they've uh, they just left it and mm-hmm. restarted it up and it actually kind of kick started it. So oh, nice. Yeah. So would you want to take off that dry algae or just leave it on and let it? They, they left it on. They left it on and literally they didn't have the delay like if you scraped your screen again. So mm-hmm. you know, I've never let one <laughs> dry out to test that. <laughs> okay, that's fair. Uh, so another question: Have you ever built a massive LG scrubber for a large system, or maybe consider the application for wastewater cleanup? Um, the biggest one we build is the same one I have on my personal system, which is about a double three um, CW three hundred. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't like getting the pipe much longer than about what what's uh, like twenty eight inches um just due to the decrease in flow as you get further out um especially on something that size Mm -hmm. um so anybody who's got more than you know in a thousand gallon system they just got to buy two of those or you know a 1200 gallon system whatever it might be um as far as commercial wastewater stuff like that um i have seen some where they're um in a big cylinder like a four foot cylinder that it's got arms kind of, and, and they've, and they do them like that. Um, but no, I haven't, we haven't sized them up for that. That would be pretty tough. Yeah, that's fair. Let's throw a quick shout out, Ed. Thank you so much for the super chat, buddy. Much, much appreciated. Very kind of you. Uh, one of the other comments has went by, uh, they're just saying if it does dry out, you can put clear wrap over it. We'll keep it alive for a really long time. Uh, similar to a paintbrush. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. Good point on that one. Ryan, again, thank you very much. Uh, Someone says, quarantine your macros. Other fish disease. So apparently they say it's a benefit because you're not going to necessarily take in stuff that has diseases or potential pests in it. Chato from another system, another benefit someone was saying. Uh, Yeah. Does an algae scrubber remove nitrates? (laughs) Yes. That's the first thing it removes. Yep. When nitrates more than phosphates, phosphates are real tough to break down. So, mm-hmm. um, one thing to note actually is if you want to remove nitrates, you also need a bit of ph- phosphates. I'm assuming that that is how it is with carbon dosing and other stuff. That red field yeah. ratio. So, if you have zero phosphates, does it still grow and remove nitrates, or do you need to have those nutrients in order for it to grow? Um, I I can't honor honestly answer mm-hmm. that. I would assume it would still grow. Um, the only stuff I have is anecdotal from, um, you know, people that have tested it, but they always have phosphates, some sort of phosphates in their system. So unless they're running just an absurd amount of GFO, (laughs) you know, a GFO reactor to get that way down, but Mm -hmm. you don't even want that because then your corals are going to be all shriveled up too. Yep. No. So yeah, zero of anything's bad. You never want zero. Nope. Nope. Um, do, 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 do on screen chat is frozen oh so it is here i'm just gonna kill the screen chat uh how much how much noise do the scrubbers make um you're gonna get a little splashing sound with a new one just because there's nothing to slow the water down coming down the screen Mm -hmm. um but it should be less than what your skimmer produces most of the time um as far as that or a drain into your sump okay um Occasionally, um, you'll get a surging of your drain pipe. You can either put a T into that or just play with it a little bit. Mm -hmm. We don't recommend gluing them in unless you're going to externally mount them. But glue them in and get that air out of there, and that'll stop the surge. And then they're they're almost silent. Okay, awesome. Um, So is it better to feed one off a drain pipe or off of its own pump? Off of a return, off its own pump, okay. um, or ma- or manifold it off your return. Don't don't plumb them into the drain. You're not going to get consistent flow, okay. and then you still got to plumb in a bypass because you have to be able to shut the water off mm-hmm. when you need to clean the screen. Okay, no, that makes sense. Perfect. 
Um, so another question was asking about larger ones. So say if a pub public aquarium wanted one, is there an option to go big with one? Like I said, the biggest we do right now is a basically a double 300, which mm -hmm. would handle anywhere from a thousand to 1500 gallons, um, depending on stocking, feeding, stuff like that. Um, to get any bigger than that, we'd have to really research that on that. But the problem is, is like I said, the further out you get when you start cutting those slots like we do in the screen is, is that first screen is just going to get blasted with water where the last screen isn't going to get the correct flow rates. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's why, I mean, they might have to buy more than one or something, but we can work with them on that. Okay. Um, so it's an option, daisy chain, then we can do a few different options. Uh, Tina was asking, does it come with a pump? Do you need your own pump? No, you'll need your own pump. Okay. No, we don't supply the pump, so that's why. Yeah, so... Oh, excuse me. Um, we give the people options. Some people don't like to use another pump, and they use it. They manifold it off their returns. Mm -hmm. I, li I like using DC pumps because mm -hmm. they're easy to dial in, and once they're dialed in, all you do is press the feed button, um to clean the screen and it takes you should take you no more than five minutes to clean the screen and get it right back in so nice and quick and easy yep and then i know this is going to be very variable but one question people i've seen asked a few times is how often do you need to maintain it or to clean it usually after the first harvest you know it usually takes I say four to six weeks to get that first growth on there. Mm -hmm. um, we've had it as fast as 14 to 21 days. Um, but usually it's every 10 to 14 days. 10 to 14. So every two weeks. That's not bad. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Le less maintenance than your skimmer. Perfect. Less maintenance is always a big thing. Um, yep. So speaking of less maintenance, another big claim I hear a lot is people saying that you don't need water changes or greatly reduces water changes having a turf scrubber. Yes. Yep. Yes. Um, the only way you're going to get away with doing that is to have a dosing system set up unless you're running a fish only tank. Yep. If you're running a fish only tank, scrubber, skimmer, top off water, RODI, don't use tap. Um, but you don't really need to change it on a fish only system because it's it's removing all the, the nitrates and phosphates out of the water. Okay. Um, on a reef system, yes, as long as you have a dosing Regiment set up to replace those trace elements, you know, calcium, alkalinity, magnesium, and the trace elements that your corals are consuming, you can almost cut your water changes to nil. Okay, awesome. Uh, so another question came up, can you connect it to a calcium reactor? So the flow out of a calcium reactor is very low, like it's a drip compared to the sheet of water you want running down a turf scrubber. No. So you, no. yeah, you could put the fluent line, you know, feeding into the pump so it runs through it, but you wouldn't really directly connect it. No, no, yeah. you'd never get enough flow for your screen to grow cor correctly. Yeah. Uh... And, that, and that's the two biggest things, flow and lighting. So mm -hmm. if your flow's too low or your flow's too high, you're not, you're always going to get slime on that screen. It's finding that butter zone mm -hmm. and that's where the hair algae will grow. So, so if there's too much flow, you actually get a slime on it as well? Yeah, you'll get a okay. slime on it or you won't get hardly any growth because you're just blasting everything off of it. So that's just because it doesn't have a chance to attach to it. It's getting pushed away. Kind of. It doesn't have a chance to pull the nutrients out. Okay. Um, what I've found on my personal scrubber is, is once you get it dialed in and you get that first harvest out of the way mm -hmm. and there's, you know, hair algae stuck in the uh, holes on the screen there is, is you can, you can put a lot of flow to them and they'll still grow. Yeah. You can put a lot of flow to them and they'll still grow. Not that I recommend doing it, keep it where it needs to be, but mm -hmm. you know, it, it's possible. But you got to get that you got to get that initial growth started on the screen. Then you can play around with it a bit more. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Um, so Mark was saying scrubbers can make it hit zero if you run it twenty four seven. Yeah, if it's ever pulling too much, just reduce the time you're late on. It's, it's a really easy way to regulate it. Yeah, don't cut the water, but cut the light. Yep, exactly. Um, by feeding a fluent, thrusting. Yeah, so if you if you put your fluent line from your calcium reactor to the intake pump that's running your scrubber, it's going to help remove some of that CO2 and stuff from it. I mean, that's the only way you'd really connect it. You're also asking about connecting to like a Pax Bellum. Same thing. All you're doing is adding that water so it's in the same chamber as the LG, which will absorb a bit of CO2. 
So. You could, or just dump it into the chamber where your pump for your scrubber is. <laughs> yeah, pretty much all works out the same. Yeah. Perfect. Um, just making sure I didn't skip any other questions. So, if people want to learn more about the Clearwater Scrubbers, where can they find you? You can go to our website, www.clearwaterscrubbers.com. Mm -hmm. Um, you can find out reviews and any other information you need from any of our distributor, Marine Depot, Bulk Reef Supply, uh, Aquarium Specialty, Aqua Cave. Um, if your local store is wanting them, um, have them reach out and send us an email there. So we, we do sell direct to stores. So Okay, excellent. So you're all over the place. Yes, we are. We're the only manufacturer distributed by the big boys, and there's a reason for it. They, <laughs> they've tested ours and, and given us the feedback on them. Nice. That's perfect. Yeah, everyone in the chat that has one just seems to love them. They're, they've been raving about them, so that's awesome to hear. Love to hear it. Love to hear it. Hope they're happy with them. Perfect. Yeah, there you go. Another one's an amazing product. Thanks again. Lo loving it that's awesome hopefully i answered all your guys questions i don't think i missed any if i did ask them again no nope. think... look for our sump lineup i'm hoping by the end of the year nice. so we'll, we'll have those so that people don't have to figure out how to wait, wait, it's uh, okay. wait so tell me more about these sumps since we haven't spoken uh, anything the sumps are gonna be black and clear just like our scrubbers um, they're going to come with all the bells and whistles, your dosing chamber, or uh, your dosing tubes, um, probe holders, uh, separate chambers for your drain, separate, uh, chamber for your return pump. Mm -hmm. Um, we are, after going to bulk reef, they will be able to hold the clear filters. So if anybody yep. does want to run those, um, those filter mats, they'll be able to do that. Um, but the big thing is, is that they have the stand for the scrubber already built into them. So cool. basically all you do is, is put the scrubber in there and hook the pump up. They will come with the drain plumbing too, uh, included in there. So, and they will also come with, um, pod hotels that were designed by SB reefs. Mm -hmm. So, you don't have to worry if you're throwing some pods away with the algae that you have another pod source in there. Yep. Perfect. Uh, so one of the questions someone asked, uh, scrubbers versus algae reactors. Uh, scrubbers more efficient. It's never going to quit growing like mm -hmm. the algae reactors. That's the big thing I, I hear, um, from the people that have algae reactors is, is, you know, they work great for a couple months and then they quit growing. So, yep. Or they start growing hair algae and you get all nasty got, inside. <laughs> yeah, you've got a mess inside there. Okay. Um, so the the scrubber's far far more efficient. Mm -hmm. It's it's going to remove the nutrients far far faster. Okay. All the reactors are a little smaller, but mm -hmm. the scrubber's way better at doing it. Far better. And a, and a pretty small package considering how much yeah. it pulls out. Uh, so Tino is asking, what size would you recommend for a seventy five gallon tank? Uh, that's our CW 50. That's exactly what we designed those for the, the 60 to 90 cube range in there. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Uh, zero. Yeah. A lot of people are talking about dialing back their skimmer with it as well. Yeah. So definitely we'll have testing, hopefully by rap Orlando done on that. They're nice. going to get going on that. So we'll, we'll have definitive answers on that. Perfect. You'll have to, I'm going to have to pull you on again once you get all those testing results. That'll be kind of cool I'm, to see. I'm, I'm very excited to get that. And I'm mm -hmm. very thankful that they, they stepped up and wanted to do that for us. So I, I can't thank those guys enough um, to do it just because we don't have the time. You know, you, you guys out there are killing us and we couldn't be happier with, you know, the amount of units we're selling. But, uh, yeah, I want, I want some scientific data to back that up. Oh, that's awesome. Well, hit me up when you get that. Cause I'd love to have you back on to talk about what all you found. That'd be awesome. Definitely. Perfect. Well, I think hopefully we caught out all the comments and all the questions in there. Uh, da -da -da. yeah. So someone was just mentioning about plumbing, plumbing it to your overflow. Um, it's more recommended to have it on its own pump just so you can fine tune and control it more. 
most people eventually won't run them 24 seven. Yeah. Usually you can run it 24 hours a day. There'll come a point where it'll probably work too well and you'll want to tone your light down a bit. And earlier we said you want to at least 12 hours. So I mean, reverse tank schedule if you do need to tone it down. But I mean, if you still have nutrients you want to get rid of, I mean, leave that light up high. Yep. Yep. And you'll find that you'll find pretty quickly that, that, exact amount of hours you want it and then it pretty much stays there you're not going to get an up and down with it where it's sucking more you know consuming more nutrients at one point than it is at another it's it will leave it pretty much right there okay perfect awesome thanks so much for coming on today josh i appreciate it thank you guys if you, if you have any questions other than that, you can always email us at sales at clearwaterscrubbers.com. Perfect. And I will make sure I put that link in the description after the video. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. Thanks so much for coming on. Thanks, guys. Right. Have a good night. Thanks.